everybody said Amen. our father we thank you for the bible study thank you for your goodness thank you for your love thank you for your mercy thank you for the teaching spirit that you have given us the spirit of truth we're asking lord that tonight you teach us your word yourself and make it personal to everyone and Lord, I pray you give us the wisdom for personal application of your word to our lives, our spiritual life, our family life, our Christian life, our professional life, every way, every area of our lives in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that the study of the word will profit everyone every member every minister every invitee and everyone that will listen to the bible study even tonight in jesus name help us not to take your word for granted not to come as usual and then just hear as usual and not make an impact in the life we pray lord that your word every detail everything you say will make impact transformational in every life in jesus name thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray amen god bless you you can sit down tonight we come to our bible study again we appreciate those who are coming for the first time and we appreciate those who have been coming every time we're praying that the word of God will bear fruit, much fruit, more fruit, and greater fruit in every life in Jesus' name. We are studying the epistle of James, general epistle to all the believers. Today we're coming to study three. And we're looking at James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. James chapter 1, reading from verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth the given to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. And then in verse 6, it tells us, but let him ask in faith, nothing no wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed those are the two verses we're looking at today it's talking about wisdom and it says if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of god when we're talking about wisdom there is human wisdom and if we have human wisdom, we can go far in the world, in the things we do, in the things we decide, and in the things we achieve, human wisdom. But there's not only human wisdom, there's devilish wisdom, horrific, terrible, horrifying wisdom. That's the wisdom of the devil. And the Bible talks about that. Of course, we don't want that. And if that has been in our lives, so to purge ourselves of every satanic and uh, horrible uh, wisdom so that we can have the, the wisdom of God. And then there is the spiritual wisdom. That is the wisdom that comes from the spirit of God. That's actually what the scripture here is talking about. If any of you lack the wisdom of the spirit, if any of you lack the wisdom revealed in the scriptures, if any of you lack spiritual, scriptural wisdom, let him ask of God and let him ask him faith when he asks, nothing wavering. Because if he wavers, if he doubts, if he has some belief, nothing shall be given unto him. We're talking tonight and preaching tonight and studying tonight on passionate importunate prayer for pure practical wisdom in james chapter 3 verse 17 james 3 verse 17 it says but the wisdom that is from above that's the wisdom we're studying about tonight the wisdom from above the wisdom from the throne of god the wisdom from the spirit of god himself the wisdom that is from above is first pure 
then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, and without partiality and without hypocrisy. It tells us about this supernatural wisdom, this spiritual wisdom, this wisdom from the Spirit of God. And it says the characteristic of that wisdom is that that wisdom is pure not impure. It doesn't lead us to impurity. It doesn't lead us to pollution. It doesn't lead us to evil. The Spirit of God leads us with the wisdom that is false, pure. And then it says, the wisdom that comes from above, the wisdom spiritual, the wisdom from the Spirit of God is peaceable. It doesn't lead us to be pugnacious or fighting or violence. Any wisdom that leads us to pollution any wisdom that leads us to fight chain and you know being prognacious is not of God it's of the devil the wisdom that we are studying about and the wisdom we are praying about and the wisdom we want from above is pure is peaceable is gentle the wisdom that comes from God so influences us and so impacts our lives it makes us gentle if we are aggressive, if we are boisterous, if we are destructive, and if we oppress other people, whatever wisdom we use to oppress other people, that's not wisdom from above. The wisdom from above and the wisdom the scripture says which you pray for is uh, first of all pure, is peaceable, is gentle, and is easy to be entreated. That is as we interact together the one with another. The wisdom we have is not the wisdom that never forgives. It's not the wisdom that punishes a neighbor for what he did in the past year. And we want to operate in the wisdom of God. And the wisdom of God makes us to forget all the offenses of the past year, all the offenses of past life. And it makes us to be easily entreated. Once somebody says, I'm sorry, genuinely, they we say that's all right because we have the spirit of God and that spirit gives us the wisdom that is easy to be entreated in fact this wisdom is full of mercy and good fruits that's the kind of wisdom we want and that's the kind of wisdom we're learning about in the scriptures and it says it is impartial without partiality it's not selective in the application of the word of God to A or B or C to the brother or to the sister he is impartial and the wisdom from above is without hypocrisy that's the wisdom we do not have naturally that's the wisdom we do not have humanly that's the wisdom we do not have by either human education or human training it takes the spirit of God to bring that wisdom into our lives and that's why we pray and that's why we pray passionately importunately so that we can have this practical wisdom that comes from above once again tonight passionate importunate prayer for pure practical wisdom we're looking at three things as we study tonight number one perceiving the wisdom we all lack the wisdom we all lack, you and I, there is a kind of wisdom we lack. And you and the people of the world, and even the people in the church, there's a kind of wisdom we all lack. And we perceive the wisdom we all lack. Number two is praying for wisdom from the Lord. The wisdom that comes from the Lord, not from the books of the world, not from the theater of the world world, not from the activities of the world, and not from all the areas of the world, but this one comes from the Lord, praying for wisdom from the Lord. Number three, possessing his wisdom in 
our lives. It's something to study and it's another thing to possess. It's something to know. It's another thing for us to operate and to lead and to lead our lives in the wisdom that he has given. Number three, possessing of his wisdom. We don't possess all his wisdom, but we possess the portion he gives us. We possess of his wisdom uh, in uh, our lives. Let's come to number one. Number one, uh, receiving the wisdom we all lack. And uh, we come to James again, chapter 1, verse 5. In James chapter 1, verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given. Him. He says we should ask for the wisdom, the wisdom which we lack. We're dividing this to three parts. Number one, the wisdom for workmanship beyond natural wisdom. Number two, the weapon of wisdom above native wisdom. Number three, the wealth. Of wisdom higher than the neighbor's wisdom. Look at number one. Number one is the wisdom for workmanship beyond natural wisdom. That's the kind of wisdom we have, which is natural. Everyone has wisdom to do some specific things in life, and it's natural. We're born with that, and yet beyond that natural wisdom, we need the wisdom for workmanship. We can do the work in the world. We can do everything we need to do in the world. After all, uh, the people who are not born again, the people who are not saved, the people who are not regenerated, the people whose lives and hearts have not been transformed. They do some kind of work. They are professionals who are not born again. There are, you know, literally many people who do not have the Spirit of God, and yet they do natural things, and they do that by natural wisdom. But we're called to a kind of work that is beyond the natural, a kind of work that is beyond the ordinary. And when God calls us to that, he has to give us the kind of wisdom for workmanship beyond our natural wisdom. He tells us in Exodus chapter 31, reading from verse 3, he says, And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. Here is the work to be done in the tabernacle. Here is the work to be done amidst the common wealth of Israel. Here is work to be done by the people of God for the worship of God. And yet God has to say, I've chosen him. I've appointed him, I've selected him, and given him, number one, the Spirit of God. And now he says, in wisdom, because of the workmanship of what he has to do. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, to devise cunning works, craft, and to work in gold and in silver, and in brass, look at verse 5, in verse 5, in the cutting of stones, the natural things that maybe other people can do, but he needed the wisdom of God to be able to do that cutting stones and having the iron bending and everything. God says, I want him to do it for me. And I want to give a specification from heaven. And I want him to do it according to all the specifications from heaven. And he needs so supernatural wisdom and it says in carving of timber to work in all manner of workmanship and that tells us then when God gives us work to do what we do is not going to be in the natural wisdom of the world in the natural wisdom we are born with but in the wisdom of the spirit of God that he grants unto us in first Corinthians chapter 2 reading here from verse 7 Seven. First Corinthians chapter 2, reading from verse 7, but we speak 
the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Here, Paul the Apostle says, He is not caught in stone, he is not a bending iron, he is not carving wood, he is preaching, he is declaring the mind of God and preaching the gospel, he is declaring the word of salvation and the wonder of sanctification and readiness for the coming of the Lord and he does that not in his natural wisdom the ability natural ability to teach and natural ability to put things together and interpret it says no but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory uh, look at uh, verse um, uh, look at verse 8 there in verse 8 it says which none of the princes of the world knew that is this wisdom the wisdom from above the princes of the world they don't know about this wisdom for a they know not it they would not have crucified the lord of glory there is wisdom then that comes from above for workmanship and the watchmen of the Lord and the workmen of the Lord and the preachers of the gospel we cannot just come in a natural wisdom with a natural intelligence and say I can do it this way and that way no I'm a teacher in the world so I can come in the church and teach no I'm a preacher I'm a public speaker in the world and because of the wisdom I've gathered as a teacher public speaker in the world then I can come to the ministry and demonstrate this it says no the wisdom we have for workmanship in the house of God the wisdom we have for dividing the word of truth and bringing sinners to salvation it says it's not the wisdom which the princes of this world which they have will speak wisdom from above come to number two here number two is the weapon of wisdom above native wisdom the weapon of wisdom above native wisdom we're coming to first kings chapter two and we're reading from verse six. First kings chapter two verse six do therefore according to thy wisdom and let not his own head go down to the grave in peace here david was talking to solomon and understand solomon had not yet received the other kind of wisdom the supernatural wisdom which he prayed for later but at this time now before that prayer for the wisdom he already possessed some wisdom and david said to him do thou therefore according to thy wisdom according to the wisdom native wisdom and maybe you have that native wisdom maybe you have the human wisdom but you can still pray for something higher something greater that comes from god look at verse 9 in verse 9 it says now therefore hold him not guiltless for thou art a wise man and knoweth what thou Otis to do unto him, but is our head bring thou down to the grave with blood. Here again, David was still talking to Solomon about another man, and he says, <laughs> Solomon, uh, you see, this man offended me and offended the kingdom and i couldn't handle it because i i was afraid of them these sons of zeroiah are too hard for me i couldn't deal with them but solomon deal with them according to thy wisdom native wisdom to handle other people to subdue them to subject them to oppress them to take away anything they have and to stop them from living he says solomon you have the wisdom native wisdom what kind of wisdom do we have 
that can oppress other people, judge other people, clamp down on other people, destroy the progress of other people, even, even make their lives so delicate and so tough that they don't want to live anymore. There is native wisdom that people have, but there's something greater than native wisdom. And Solomon knew that. That's why in chapter 3, chapter 3, we're reading from verse 5. He tells us, In Gibeah, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I shall give thee. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it says, And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, great favor, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, and now, O Lord, my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father, and I am but a little child. I know not to go out or to come in. Remember, he had native wisdom. He had wisdom he was born with. He had wisdom he acquired by human education. And yet he said, I come to a position. I come to a place. I need to lead the people of God and to lead them. This is a spiritual matter. I do not know to go out or come in in this spiritual situation. Look at verse 8. In verse 8 it says, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge this so great thy people. He needed wisdom from above. That's what the scripture is, is saying. Whatever wisdom we think we've got, and we've got some wisdom, otherwise we'll not be where we are today in profession, in the family, we'll not be where we are today in our Christian life. We've got some wisdom, and yet there's still wisdom beyond the wisdom we have got now, the weapon of wisdom above native wisdom. Wisdom. And as we call upon the Lord and pray, it will give us the needed wisdom in Jesus' name. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, reading from verse 1. I said in my heart, go to now, and I will prove thee with mercy. Therefore, enjoy pleasure, and behold... This also is vanity. Solomon came to a period in his life after he had used native wisdom, after he had requested for supernatural wisdom, and he received supernatural wisdom. He came to a point in his life that he wanted to look at the things of the world and taste the pleasure of the world. He said he gave himself to that. Look at verse 3. In verse 3 it says, it says, I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine and also acquainting my heart with wisdom. Now he didn't, uh, he couldn't uh, figure out supernatural wisdom native wisdom and he said i want to taste i'm going to give myself to wine i'm going to give myself to revelry i'm going to give myself to the things of the world and to lay hold on uh, on folly 
and he says till i might see what was the good for the sons of men which they should do under heaven all the days of their life uh, look at verse um, 9 there in verse 9 so i was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem also my wisdom remained in me which wisdom is lead back to the natural wisdom the supernatural wisdom had left him because when he married all those hundreds of women God departed from him the power of god the knowledge of god the truth of god departed from him and the gift of god the wisdom supernatural departed from him but the natural wisdom remained he said he gave himself to all those uh, things that dissipated his life that destroyed his life that cut him away from god he backslid and yet he said my wisdom remains with is me and then he tells us in uh, in the next verse it says and whatsoever mine eyes desired i kept not from them i withheld not my heart from any joy for my heart rejoiced in all my labor and this was my portion of all my labor. He lost self-control. He lost self-denial. He just gave himself to whatever pleasure and whatever work of the flesh that demanded his attention. And yet he said, my wisdom remains with me. We shall be careful we don't fall into the trap of thinking we still have wisdom because we can gauge that and measure that and do that and oppress that and inflict punishment on others and judge in a brutal way and still think well i still have wisdom yes native wisdom you remember when solomon died and his son came to the throne they came to the son they said please your father is gone when your father was on earth he really tormented us he put the yoke upon us heavy load upon us and he couldn't talk because that man did it in his native wisdom but the lord is asking us that we shouldn't operate in native wisdom we should have the wisdom from above so that we can do a work for the lord that is profitable for you and profitable to god and profitable to our fellow man look at number three here number three we're looking at the wealth of wisdom higher than neighbors wisdom there are kinds of wisdom that neighbors have and neighbors have uh, natural wisdom and neighbors have human wisdom and neighbors have native wisdom but we as christians as we come to the lord the lord is asking us to come and ask him for a kind of wisdom that is higher than that of our neighbors we're looking at uh, deuteronomy chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 6 deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 6 it says keep therefore and do them that's the word of god that's the commandment of god for this is your wisdom the bible this is your wisdom the commandments of god this is your wisdom the sayings of christ this is your wisdom the exhortation in the epistles this is your wisdom we have the bible we have the word of christ we have the exhortation of the lord that our neighbors do not have maybe they have the bible but they don't have the spirit of truth that will guide them into all truth we have what our neighbors do not have and the wealth of wisdom higher than our neighbors wisdom were to preach in that that's why we pray they don't have to pray anything they want to do they just recollect when this happened the other time that's the way i handled it when that happened to that man 
understand that the way he handled it all they can do is to have i mean our neighbors is to have the natural native wisdom but we will have access to the word of God. We have access to the wisdom of the scriptures and we'll pray and we'll preach in that kind of wisdom. It says, keep therefore and, and do them for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, of the nation that surround you, of the people that surround you, which shall hear all these statues and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people, a wise and understanding not people it's with that wisdom we build our lives it's with that wisdom we build the church it's with that wisdom we build our home our home our home you see all of us we have neighbors not only neighbors we have parents and we see how our parents ruled their families guided their families operated in their families and you know if you are like me you will know that the wisdom of our parents in building the home and building their household their wisdom was limited they could only refer to the proverbs of the nation or to the practices of the nation or practices of other people and most of our parents did not make it they didn't make it in the natural neighbor's wisdom but we now come and thank God we're born again. Thank God we're saved. Thank God we're children of God. And thank God we have the Bible, the scriptures. Thank God we have the spirit that helps us to understand the interpretation of the word of God. And with that wisdom, higher wisdom. With that wisdom, brighter wisdom. With that wisdom, deeper wisdom revealed by the word of God, we build our lives. We build our families. We build our household. We don't say that the way my daddy dealt with my mother, and that's what I'll do. Uh, uh, that, that one is a lower kind of wisdom. Come up. Come up higher. If any of you lack wisdom, Wisdom to build your home and wisdom to build your life and wisdom to build the church. Let him ask of God and you come asking without wavering. Proverbs chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 1. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1, every wise woman builds her house. Every wise woman builds her a house if you're a wife you need wisdom to build the home to build your family to build the household and it's not just the native wisdom it's not just the natural wisdom it's not the wisdom you acquired from your mom from your dad you need wisdom greater than that wisdom the wisdom that comes from the spirit of god and from the scripture every wise woman build it her house but the foolish pluck it down with her hands we're looking at uh, chapter 31 of proverbs and we're looking at verse 26 31 verse 26 she opens her mouth with wisdom you're building a family she opens her mouth with wisdom you are a man you're building your family he opened his mouth with wisdom you're building a company you're building the workers and you're building people that will help you project your vision achieve your vision he opened his mouth with wisdom you're building on the mission and the vision that the lord has given you you're a man you're a woman we need the wisdom from above and the way you open your mouth the way you talk and the things you say he she opened her mouth his mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness we're coming to point number two point number two we're looking at praying for wisdom 
from the Lord. If it's coming from the Lord, we need to pray. If we're asking for the wisdom from the Lord, we need to pray. That's why it says in James chapter 1, reading from verse 5. James chapter 1 verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, and we do, and we do. If any of you lack wisdom, you may not lack wisdom for human enterprise, but when it comes to spiritual enterprise, we lack wisdom. If any of you lack wisdom as a single man, single lady, maybe you have the wisdom to keep yourself, comport yourself, and go through life with all the shades and meanings of the things we go through. But when it comes to you now have a family, we need wisdom higher than the wisdom we ever had. If any of you lack wisdom, maybe as a believer, as a child of God, you live your life in righteousness and holiness before him him all the days of your life now you become a minister now you become a leader you need the wisdom you didn't have when you are just an honorary member of the church if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him look at verse 6 in verse 6 it says but let him ask in faith let him pray in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven and toss. Well, we're coming to this under three subtitles. Number one, there's a search for wisdom in the world. Search for wisdom in the world. Any leader that comes up in any community, in any country, and they want to, you know, build a, a people around them that will help them fulfill their mission, their vision, and to govern very well. They look for people, they search for people that have wisdom that will support them, that will lift them up, and that will uphold the vision they have. And there is a search, and that's not just people in the world, those in the church too, the people who belong to the Lord too, will search for wisdom as we live in this world. There are so many pitfalls, there are so many pitfalls, there are uh, potholes, there are so many dangers and difficulties that if we do not have the wisdom, we'll just be falling and rising, falling and rising into those situations in the world. That is how the world is. But we search for wisdom while we live in this world. Number two, it the supplication for wisdom without wavering. When we come to the Lord, we know, of course, we need wisdom. Wisdom to do what we have never done and wisdom to tread the path, the path of holiness, the path of righteousness. And we come to us knowing that the Lord will give unto to us because we're making supplication for the wisdom without wavering. Number three is the supremacy of his wisdom above the worldliness. The supremacy of his wisdom above the worldliness. The worldliness are the people in the world. They may have great names. They may have exalted names. They may have the names that are very popular. They're still in the world all the same. They are worldliness. And we need wisdom supreme, higher, greater than those people who are in the world. The supremacy of his wisdom, of God's own wisdom, above the worldliness. Look at number one. Number one is the search for wisdom in the world. In uh, Job chapter 28, reading from verse 12. Job 28 verse 12, but where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? It's a search. It's a search. I'm searching for wisdom that I'll do all things in a way that will bring forth the desired outcome. 
the desired fruit in every area of my life and without the wisdom from above how can I have that and now I'm searching I'm searching where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding verse 13 in verse 13 man knoweth not the price thereof neither is it found in the land of the living that is in the world anywhere you search north east west south anywhere you search up there down there it says neither is it found in the land of the living obviously then this is not natural wisdom obviously then uh, this is not native wisdom obviously then this is not our neighbor's wisdom because all those neighbors all those natural people they are in the land of the living we are asking for the wisdom we are searching for the wisdom that comes from above look at verse 14 in verse 14 the death says it is not in me and the sea says it is not in me verse 15 in verse 15 it says it cannot be gotten for gold it's not something you have enough currency to buy you can buy books you can buy tapes you can buy whatever but the wisdom is not there the kind of wisdom we're asking for you cannot buy with money and then it says not be wage uh, for the for the price thereof in verse 16 in verse 16 it says it cannot be valued with the gold of offer and with the precious onyx or the sapphire verse 17 the gold and the crystal cannot equal it and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of gold verse 18 in verse 18 no mention shall be made of coral or of pearls or for the price of wisdom is above rubies is above what you can earn by money what you can earn by butter uh, by trade and butter by exchanging what you have of the currency of the world with this kind of wisdom that we're talking about you cannot buy anything from heaven with money salvation holiness righteousness wisdom and the life the new life we live you cannot buy that with any currency on earth in verse 19 it says in verse 19 the topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it neither shall it be valued with pure gold verse 20 in verse 20 it says whence then cometh wisdom whence then cometh wisdom and where is the place of understanding look at verse 28 in verse 28 it says and unto man he said behold the fear of the lord that is wisdom the fear of the lord is wisdom the fear of the lord is wisdom and to depart from evil is understanding that the kind of wisdom he wants us to have the, the the wisdom that fears the lord that believes the word of god that knows that without salvation we're separated from god and we cannot please god and therefore a moment a definite day comes in your life you make up your mind you take a decision you fear the lord you fear the word of the lord you fear the coming judgment you repent of your sin and you call upon upon the Lord and you have a definite experience of salvation and you have the grace of God in your life that makes you now to live in his wisdom and to walk in his wisdom it tells us in first Corinthians chapter 1 reading from verse 22 first Corinthians chapter 1 reading from verse 22 for the Jew require a sign and the Greeks the Gentiles seek after wisdom 
Seek after wisdom. Searching for wisdom. Verse 23. In verse 23, it tells us, but we preach Christ. Christ crucified. Unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. Verse 24. In verse 24, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Christ, a Savior in the wisdom of God. Christ, a sanctifier in the wisdom of God. Christ, the one that enables us to live and to walk in the fear of God, in the understanding of what he requires, Christ is the wisdom of God. Look at verse 30. In verse 30, and of, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. Unto us wisdom. If somebody does not have Christ as Savior, Christ living on the inside of him, he might have natural wisdom, native wisdom, earthly wisdom. He does not have the wisdom that takes us to heaven. The wisdom that makes a way for us and to go through all the trials, all the temptations of the world and to get to heaven. Eventually, Christ Jesus is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Look at number two. Number two here is the supplication for wisdom without wavering. The supplication for wisdom without wavering. It tells us in James chapter 1 verse 5 again. If any of you lack wisdom, now we know. If we don't have Christ, we lack wisdom. Now we know. If we don't have salvation, we lack a special kind of wisdom. Now we know. If we do not know how to transmit and translate what we read in the word into our heart so that our hearts are transformed, our hearts are changed, and we walk as new creatures in Christ. If we don't have the wisdom to transfer and transmit the word into our lives, we lack a real serious wisdom. And it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. We have to have time to pray and to ask of God. Just listening to the Bible, just listening to the study, that's not enough. But we ask the Lord. Let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally. And upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it says, But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed. We're looking at Luke chapter 21, reading from verse 15. Luke chapter 21, verse 15. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom. I will give you. That means those disciples who had been following after the Lord, they didn't have this yet, but he said, I will give them. That means those of us who have been following the Lord, I'm saved, I'm born again, praise the Lord. I'm sure my name is in the book of life. Yes, he told them, rejoice not because the spirits are subject unto you. But rejoice because your names are written in heaven. These are the people from chapter 10. He told them their names were written in heaven. Yet he said, there's something you lack, I will give unto you. There's something you lack, you still have to pray for. There's something you lack, and you still have to seek the face of the Lord, and I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gain, say, or receive. 
we have adversaries, we have persecutors, we have the people that want to stop our journey, we have the people that want to a kind of a dilute, minimize or diminish a commitment on our way to heaven. And if you do not have the wisdom beyond I am saved, I am born again, you'll not be able to resist them effectively. But he says, as on your way to heaven, heaven and you're confronted by all these things that come against your life wanting to stop you wanting to hinder you wanting to diminish your commitment to get into heaven he says i will give you a mouth and wisdom which all all of them no exception all of them put together whoever they are which all your adversaries shall not be able to gain say or receive look at number three here number three the supremacy of his wisdom above the worldlings the supremacy of his wisdom is wisdom in us it's wisdom flowing through us. It's wisdom operating in us. It's wisdom looking at all the things happening in the world all around you. The wisdom to still remain steadfast, solid, and stable. In spite or despite all those things that may be around you. The wisdom that is supreme beyond the wisdom of the world lives. We're coming to Colossians chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 3. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In him, in Christ, is hidden all the wisdom that you can have supreme, supernatural. The treasures, the treasures of wisdom and knowledge and then in verse 8 in verse 8 it says beware lest any man spoil you beguile you destroy you deceive you uh, through the philosophy and the deceit vain deceit and the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. In our lives, we'll come across, uh, you know, people, some of them, uh, they can coach the Bible like parrots. They're not born again. They're not born again. They're not children of God. They do not know how to live the victorious life, but they can quote the Bible like parrots. And they can misquote the Bible a lot and a number of times. And if you do not have the wisdom of God, they can derail you. They can destabilize you and they can destroy the faith you have. That's why it says in Christ we have all the treasures of wisdom and all the treasures of knowledge and understanding. And you don't want people who may be able to quote the Bible, even Satan quoted the Bible to the Lord Jesus Christ. But Jesus had that supremacy of wisdom that was able to stop him, able to resist him, not just somebody quoting the Bible, quoting the Bible, and the Bible doesn't have any kind of cleansing effect in their lives. Look at verse nine in verse nine for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the godhead bodily in christ as savior in christ as sanctifier in christ our sustainer in christ our baptizer in the holy ghost in christ the one that holds us up who is able to hold up all things in the universe and we're kept in the power of the spirit of god in him dwelleth all the fullness of the godhead bodily in verse 10 it says and ye are complete in him. You don't have to go into the depths of Satan to find wisdom. We don't have to go to the riverside to find wisdom. We don't have to go to the books of a people who deal with what they call secret knowledge to get a wisdom. It says ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and 
power. And as we look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, reading from verse 14, it says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. That's real wisdom. That's real wisdom. Wise unto salvation. What the need, what the use, what the benefit of wisdom that doesn't make somebody wise unto salvation. What's the benefit of wisdom that makes somebody wise unto hypocrisy, wise unto covering up, wise unto being crafty, wise unto being deceptive, wise unto pretending that he's a child of God and he's not a child of God. What's the wisdom in hiding someone and nobody will ever know? And he says, I have wisdom, I have wisdom. I can deceive without their ever telling. I can lie without their ever finding out. He has wisdom. He can remain a child of the devil without anybody ever telling that he is a child of the devil. What's, what's the wisdom in that? And what's the benefit of that But when we have the wisdom of the scriptures that leads us to repentance, that leads us to faith in Christ, that leads us to having genuine salvation, a life transforming salvation, and we'll walk in that wisdom of God and we're wise unto salvation. That is the greatest kind of wisdom we can possess and operate in. He says, and that from a child that was known, the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Jesus. We are coming to point number three. Point number three, we're looking at possessing his wisdom in our lives. It's one thing to read it in the book. Let it come to your life. It's one thing to find it in a fellow believer, in a fellow minister. Let it come into your own life. It's, it's one thing to have it in the head. Let it come to your heart and you live by that wisdom that makes you to live the life of a sick soul, the life of a purified, sanctified spirit. It tells us once again in James chapter 1, and we're reading from verse 5. James chapter 1, reading from verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him. If anyone so called a believer, if he lives a foolish life, if he lives in folly, if he lives in an unwise manner, if he speaks in an unwise manner, if he acts in an unwise manner, and obviously everybody can tell that man, the member of a church, lacks wisdom. He doesn't have the wisdom to live a consistent, victorious life. Look at this woman. This woman, obviously, she lacks wisdom. She doesn't have the wisdom to live a triumphant, righteous, victorious life. Look at that pastor. This pastor, obviously, the way he talks and the way he acts and the way he approaches people and the way he approaches problems. Look at this pastor. He doesn't have the wisdom to live and to minister. He has not prayed because it says if we pray, he will give you the wisdom and he will give liberty 
morally and your brain is not if somebody has been acting like a foolish person an unwise person all these past years and we're hoping that there'll be a change there'll be a transformation he'll come to a higher level of living higher level of doing things but we still find that the same foolishness of the past the same unwise ways of the past is what we still find follow him to the home to the house the same foolish thing he used to do in the new year that the same thing he used to do the thing that used to cause quarrel conflict between him and the wife between her and the husband the same thing she is still doing he's still doing he has not learned that if we're going to build a home if we're going to build a church if we're going to build the kingdom with Christ we need wisdom the same old foolish thing simple thing he used to do that's what he's still doing he is not praying he may know verses of the Bible he may quote verses of the Bible he is not praying because if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him look at verse 6 in verse 6 it tells us but let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and toss in Colossians chapter 4 Colossians chapter 4 reading from verse 5 walk in wisdom walk in wisdom live in wisdom act in wisdom not human wisdom not natural wisdom not earthly wisdom not native wisdom not neighbor's wisdom walk in wisdom the supreme wisdom that comes from above walk in wisdom toward them that are without he says redeeming the time and then in verse 6 verse 6 tells us it says let your speech be always with grace seasoned with salt that she may know how ye ought to answer every man we need to possess that kind of wisdom possessing of his wisdom in our lives we're looking at this under three subtitles number one begin with the wisdom of the Lord for lifestyle number two beware of the wisdom of the lost with looseness number three behave in the wisdom of love with liberality we're looking at number one number one begin with the wisdom of the Lord for a lifetime as we are beginning a new level of living we must begin with the wisdom of the Lord that is to have salvation wisdom unto salvation if you may come into the Bible study and come into the services and you're just here and then you pray pray and pray but prayer that does not relate to salvation we must begin now to pray wisely so that we have the wisdom that leads us to salvation begin any project you are going to have begin with this kind of wisdom from above pray and let the Lord lead you and guide you any step you are going to take any work you are going to do any kind of behavior you are going to have any new project you are going to have begin with the wisdom of the Lord for a lifestyle and what's the wisdom of the Lord in Job chapter 28 reading from verse 28 Job chapter 28 reading from verse 28 and unto man he said behold the fear of the Lord is wisdom and to depart from evil understanding if you have not been born again begin with that and understand you need to depart from evil you need to repent of every evil every sin everything that can damn your soul 
everything that can make you miss heaven everything that will make you that will separate you from the lord you begin by repenting of them departing from all evil that is understanding and having the fear of God who is able to kill and able to drive the soul put the soul in hell Jesus said I say unto you fear him we need to have the fear of the Lord in our hearts and as we begin this new life we begin with this wisdom the wisdom that will help us see his face on the final day. We're looking at uh, Micah chapter 6, reading from verse 8. Micah chapter 6, reading from verse 8. He has showed thee, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of thee? He requires repentance. He requires that we stop and think about our lives and meditate on the way the path our lives have been going and see if there be any wicked way in you to turn away from that he has shown you oh man what is good and what does the lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly walk humbly walk humbly with thy god look at verse 9 in verse 9 the lord's voice Boys cries unto the city, and the man of wisdom shall see thy name. The man of wisdom, the woman of wisdom, will be sober and will think and think through that I want to live my life from the beginning of this season and the beginning of the life ahead of me. I want to live that in the wisdom of the Lord. It says the man, the woman, the person of wisdom shall see thy name and hear ye the rod and who has appointed it. Let's look at number two here. Number two is beware of the wisdom of the Lord with looseness. There are people who are lost and they lose. Their lives are loose. Their language loose. Their behavior loose. Their character loose. They're lost and they live in looseness of life. Beware of the kind of wisdom those people have. In James chapter 3, reading from verse 14, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. In verse 15, it says, This wisdom descendeth not from above. The wisdom that makes a person to have hatred and malice, bitterness, this wisdom cometh not from above. The wisdom that makes a person lose, frivolous, sinful, evil, carnal, backsliding, that wisdom cometh not from above. This wisdom descended not from above. Uh, the, the, the wisdom that makes a person to hide is real feeling. It's real condemnation. And then it's able to go through life smiling and jesting. And yet there's condemnation in the heart. And it's able to cover that up. You don't want to live in that kind of wisdom that prepares you for judgment, damnation, condemnation until the final day and you're laughing your way to hell. It says that kind of wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly sensual, devilish, the wisdom that is able to pull men to yourself so that they can be defiled, that they can defile you, and you have the wisdom saying, no matter the spiritual life of that man, I'm able to, you know, use the wisdom you've gathered in the world and bring them to sin and lead them to hell, the kind of wisdom that's devilish, that's sensual, 
and that is earthly. The kind of wisdom that's able to treat teenagers, and those teenagers are sucked in into the dungeon of immorality and evil. You know, they, they do it with their smile, with, you know, whatever they have, and the sweet, sweet things they give. That wisdom is devilish. It says, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. I pray the Lord will protect us from all this kind of wisdom in the world in Jesus' name. We're coming to number three here. Number three, it says, behave in the wisdom of love with liberality. The wisdom that makes us to behave in love, in love towards believers, loving them as Christ has loved us. That's wisdom. But the kind of life or the kind of wisdom in quotes that makes us to find every reason out, outside the book why we should not love the believer as we love ourselves, the wisdom that makes people to give every excuse why they should not love uh, the, the fellow members and uh, even their neighbors, the wisdom that makes people, you know, bring all reasons and all the excuses why they should not love because they are so wise that they say, you know, if you love, if you love, if you love, even though Christ said, how can I do that? I have the wisdom, the wisdom that makes people to contradict Christ that they will not love and they give all the reasons and excuses outside the book why they should not love, that's not wisdom, that's not wisdom that's something that will destroy that soul because he contradicts Christ but your behavior in the wisdom of love from the Lord was liberality. It tells us in James chapter 3, verse 17. James chapter 3, verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, then gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Would you say in all honesty that you have prayed, you have received this kind of wisdom? Well, you need more. More challenges will come. More people will cross your way. You need more of this wisdom that is pure. Keeps you pure. Keeps other people pure. And everybody that relates with you they are purer than before they met you. That's the wisdom of God, that your life makes people pure, makes people purer than they were before they met you. The wisdom that makes you purer and purer and purer every day. That's wisdom. It says this wisdom from above is forced pure. That's the first thing to be noticed in the life of a person that has wisdom from above. First, you can notice that this woman, this man, this believer, this minister, this preacher, this pastor, he has wisdom today that keeps him pure, that keeps his ministry pure, that keeps everything that he does pure, and is purer than when we first knew him. That's wisdom from above. And then peaceable, peaceable, the wisdom that makes us to follow peace with all men. The wisdom that makes the husband to follow peace with the wife and the wife to follow peace with the husband. The wisdom that makes the head of the 
house pure and peaceable with all the people walking with him, living with him in the house. The wisdom that makes you peaceable with your father-in-law and your mother-in-law. That makes you peaceable with everybody around and you say he's a man of peace. He is a preacher of peace. He is a possessor of peace. He is a pastor that has a peaceful heart and he shows that in his dealing with people he is not you know so uh, uh, so kind of uh, boisterous and oppressive he wants to oppress people wisdom the wisdom of god makes us pure and peaceable and then it says gentle gentle we don't uh, you know behave in such an aggressive manner against anyone you know uh, people innocent people or poor people or people you can easily intimidate if you know i can easily intimidate that person you make sure you act in such a way that your action will not intimidate them or frighten them you want to be gentle to everyone that's the real wisdom was the use of the wisdom that makes the people fear you and run away from you and you intimidate everyone your language your look and your posture intimidates everyone that's not wisdom and say i know how to bring them on that subjection that's not god that's not god that does not being gentle to all men the wisdom we're praying about and the wisdom we want to preach in the wisdom that makes us gentle and easy to be entreated not the fellow that says i'll never forgive and no matter what they may beg from there beg from there who are you who do you make up of yourself a tyrant a nebuchadnezzar and herod the person god you say god has forgiven you i will never forgive them it cancels your own forgiveness the wisdom we have from above is the wisdom that makes us easy to be entreated and full of mercy and you don't hinder other people from being merciful there are those who feel that you know this fellow is too merciful that fellow is too merciful and they give and they give and they give and then you find a kind of wisdom that will curtail them a kind of wisdom that will cut them short a kind of wisdom that will kind of uh, make them regret that they are being merciful but the wisdom that comes from above is the one that looks at other people who are merciful and they say lord i pray give me that kind of wisdom that makes me to be full of mercy and of good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy the lord is calling us that we need more wisdom more wisdom in our lives in our lifestyle in our behavior in our interaction in our families in our companies in our corporations in the places where we work that we have this wisdom from above and it says if any of us you and i if we lack wisdom let's go and ask of the lord who gives to all people liberally and he upbraideth not and it shall be given him and he says but let him ask in faith nothing wavering it shall be given to us i said it shall be given to us let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer now you know the wisdom we lack you know the wisdom we lack and you want to ask the lord oh lord i see this area i lack wisdom and i'm asking and i'm asking in faith and the first wisdom to ask for is the wisdom that makes so wise unto salvation not dodging salvation not dodging repentance not dodging, seeking the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. You want to make sure you have the wisdom that makes you wise unto salvation. Wisdom that leads to repentance. Wisdom that leads to faith in Christ. Wisdom that secures the witness of the Spirit that we are a child of God. Tell the Lord, 
Transfer everything you've heard to the heart. To the heart. Wisdom. Wisdom. And as it brings us to this level of wisdom, the wisdom for workmanship. Isn't there a work he has given you to do in your personal life? If he gave the work, you need the wisdom for the workmanship. Giving you a family, that's work. Workmanship. How you build that family. How you raise that family. How you raise those children. How you build up those teenagers. Wisdom. Wisdom for workmanship. Beyond the natural wisdom that we have. Natural wisdom. My daddy used to demonstrate that's not enough. Native wisdom that my mom used to exhibit that's not enough. Neighbor's wisdom that I noticed by observation that's not enough. You need the wisdom from God, wisdom from above that makes you to live appropriately, adequately for what he has created you, wisdom. Tell him, if you are preaching, lower than the wisdom of your neighbors, You know, you don't have enough wisdom. The believer you don't even have the wisdom to keep your wife, to keep your husband. You have not asked the Lord. You have not gone to the Lord to ask. You can't have the wisdom to keep the family together to forgive, to love, to be pure, and to keep the other one pure. You're laying all the blame on them. Why don't you come to God in prayer and he'll give you the wisdom to work out every area of your life, starting from your family, to your profession, to the people that are walking along with you in your company your place of work the wells of wisdom higher than the neighbor's wisdom you hear the people of the world they're high they're lifted up they're lofty but when you get near, you see that this area of their life is lacking in wisdom. So the Lord is saying, look beyond those neighbors and pray for the wisdom that has sanctification in it. The wisdom that fills your heart with Christ the sanctifier. The wisdom that excels the wisdom of Solomon. Solomon, so wise, he couldn't discipline the flesh. And he got 700 wives, 300 concubines. 
and he said, and my native wisdom still remained with me. He oppressed the people. And the people after his death came to the sun. Your father laid heavy burdens on us. Be more gentle with us. And the son himself had no wisdom to be gentle with the people. Said, my father whips you with weaves, I whip you with scorpions. The young man did not have the, the wisdom to lead. You have wisdom to lead. Pastor, preacher, minister, leader. The wisdom to lead. The wisdom of self-control, self-discipline. He tested wine, women, worldliness. And he said, yet my wisdom remained with me. What kind of wisdom? That attracted the anger of God upon his life. And yet was claiming my native, natural, earthly wisdom remains with me. You want to seek the Lord for the wisdom that is pure, the wisdom that is peaceable, the wisdom that is gentle, the wisdom that is easy to be entreated. The wisdom that is full of good fruits, the wisdom that is full of mercy, the wisdom that is free from partiality, the wisdom that is free from hypocrisy. If you ask, he will give you. If you seek, you will find. If you knock, he will open the door of his wisdom unto you. And in every area that the Lord has given you to live, you will live in the wisdom from above. Wisdom in yourself, with yourself, to live wisely. Wisdom, not carnal. Wisdom, not wisdom to cover sin. Wisdom. To expose your sin to God and to be free from them. Not the wisdom of the philosophers, the wisdom of the people of the world. No. Great privilege, great calling. To wisdom from above that makes you free from the foolishness and the folly of the past years. Wisdom. That makes you aware of the wisdom of the world in their lostness and looseness. Wisdom that makes you to behave 
in love with liberality, loving the brethren as Christ has loved you, loving your neighbors as yourself, love, wisdom, wisdom, love. Pure life, pure love. Peaceable life, peaceable love. Gentle life, gentle language. Easily pardoning life, pardoning love, easy to be entreated, easily forgiving, merciful, merciful love, merciful life, impartial, impartial life. Impartial love, sincere, unhypocritical love, sincere, unhypocritical love. If we ask, He will give. And He will give liberally abundantly all the love we need all the wisdom we need all the gentleness we need all the purity we need all the goodness good fruits we need all the mercifulness we need all the impartiality we need all the honesty Sincerity, loyalty that we need. Wisdom is wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for revealing the truth and the death of your word unto every heart. Thank you, Lord, for the invitation you have given us that we can come and ask you for the wisdom that matters, matters in life and matters in eternity. You have invited us that if we ask, you'll grant unto us. Your people have asked, grant unto everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray you forgive all the foolishness of our past life. Amen. Help us, Lord, to begin with this pure, peaceable life and wisdom from this moment on for the rest of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Let there be pure wisdom in all our personal lives, in all our families, in all our places of work, everywhere we go that we live in such pure, peaceable, gentle wisdom, others will want to know the Christ who lives in us. We pray, Lord, make us gentle, make us peaceable, make us full of mercy, make us easy to be entreated, easy to live with people in Jesus' name. Give us the wisdom that doesn't have any partiality, that has no hypocrisy, and the wisdom that makes us to do the work in proper workmanship. You have given all the work you have given us in Jesus' name. Make our lives profitable to your kingdom. 
profitable to our neighbors make our lives so gentle so affectionate it will attract other people to the lord lord we pray as you give us the wisdom day by day we'll be increasing in this uh, scriptural spiritual wisdom in jesus name thank you lord because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray Amen.